Hello everyone, my name is Arohi and welcome to my channel. So guys, in my today's video, I'll talk about vision transformers. So vision transformers are type of deep learning model and they are designed for computer vision tasks. They are inspired by the success of transformer models in natural language processing. Traditionally, computer used a technique called convolutional neural networks for computer vision tasks. But now the vision transformers are newer approach that has gained a lot of attention recently. So vision transformers use something called self attention. So I have already explained this concept, the concept of self attention in my previous video of transformers. So the link is given in description section. You can check what is self attention in detail over there. So in my today's video, I'll just give you a brief idea what is self attention. Okay. In context of this vision transformer. All right. So self attention is a way for the computers to understand the relationship between the different parts of the image. So imagine you are looking at a, a picture of cat and with self attention computer can focus on different parts of cats like its ears, eyes and then its tails. Okay. And understand how they relate to each other and to form a whole picture. Okay. So vision transformers, basically what they does is vision transformers break down the image into smaller parts called patches. Each patch is typically a square region of the image. And in the original paper of vision transformer titled an image is worth 16 into 16 words transformer for image recognition at scale. In this paper, the author used author focused on a patch size of 16 into 16 pixels. Okay. So for example, if we have an image, the size of image is let's say 224 into 224 pixels. Okay. And the patch size is 16 into 16 pixels. So we divide the width and height of the image by the patch size to get the total number of patches. So in this case, when where our image size is 224 into 224 and height and this patch size is 16. Okay. So in this case, we are going to have 196 patches. Okay. To cover the entire image. And the stride used in the original paper is also 16. So stride means how many pixels the sliding window moves each time. Okay. So in this case, since both patch size and the stride is 16, there will be no overlap between the patches because stride is equal to the patch size and that's why there is no overlap. Okay. So once you have the patches, next thing is to uh, flatten those patches from 2D vector to a 1D vector. Okay. So each patch is treated as a separate input token. And now let's understand uh, the tokenization and how image patches are flattened using uh, this simple example. Okay. So imagine you have a large image like a photograph of beautiful landscape and in order for a computer to understand and analyze the image, we need to break it down into a smaller parts. So these smaller parts are called image patches for each patch contains a small portion of the image. For example, one patch may contain a tree, other patch may have a cloud and these kind of different things in a different patches. Okay. So let's focus on one patch. I'll explain you the concept with one patch. Okay. So uh, suppose uh, you have a patch and that patch have a tree in it. Okay. So this is just like a mini picture by itself. So however, Instead of treating it as a picture, the mini patch, okay, instead of treating it as a picture, what we want is we want that the computer to process it as a sequence of smaller elements called tokens. Okay. So to do this, we need to flatten the patch. For example, if the patch is a 16 into 16 square, we can think of it as a sequence of 256 tokens. 16 into 16 is 256 tokens. Okay. So each token represent a specific part of the patch like a pixel. So image is made up of pixels. So each uh, token is there are 256 tokens. If we are having a patch size of 16 into 16. So that means each token is a uh, is a pixel or you can say a smaller section of an patch of the patch. Okay. 
So now we have converted the image patch into a sequence of tokens. Now these tokenized patches will be served as the input to the transformer model. Okay. So by breaking down the image into smaller patches and by converting them into a sequence of tokens, the transformer model can process and understand the different parts of the image. Okay. Separately. Now, so vision transformer is a encoder only transformer. There is no decoder. I will explain you in some time why there is no decoder. But for now, just understand that vision transformer only have encoder. Okay. So let's understand it with another example. We will, I will tell you how vision transformer and the different layers of vision transformer work with the help of example. So suppose you have an image of size 32 into 32 pixels. Okay. And we have four patches of size 16 into 16 and they are not uh, overlapping. Okay. Stride is also 16. So first step is we have to flatten the patch. So we take the 2D patch and then we flatten it into a one dimensional vector. And when you flatten these patches, patch size is 16 into 16. Okay. So when you flatten these patches, each patch will become a 1D vector of 256 elements because 16 into 16 is 256. Okay. So now each token represents a specific part of the patch like a pixel. Okay. Now, after this, we have a linear projection plus positional encoding. Okay. So you can see in this architecture of vision transformer here, we have a linear projection and uh, positional encoding. So let me explain you what this linear projection does. So this linear projection in vision transformer will work on these flattened patches by transforming each 1D vector into a lower dimensional vector. Okay. So what it does, it will convert your 1D vector into a lower dimensional representation. Okay. And while, pres uh, while preserving the relationships and important features. Okay. Now, so the linear projection involves two main steps. First is weight matrix multiplication and the second one is bias addition. This is like the convolutional neural network only. What we do in convolutional neural network, we multiply weights with the input and then we add bias. The same thing is happening in linear projection. Okay. So uh, weight mult uh, we are multiplying weight with the inputs and we are adding the bias. So this involves multiplying each element of the flattened sequence by a weight and adding a bias term. The weights and biases are learned during the training process. Okay. So the result of these two steps is a transformed vector of lower dimensionality. Okay. So the meaning of a vector of a lower dimensionality refer to a vector that has fewer elements or components as compared to the original vector. Or, or you can say in other words, we can say it is a representation. It represents a reduction in the number of dimensions or features used to represent a particular object. Okay. So reducing the dimensionality can have benefits. Why? Now the question is now why we are using this uh, linear projection over here. So why we are using because we are reducing the dimension dimensionality. And what is the benefit of reducing the dim dimensionality? So one of the thing is uh, working with lower dimensional vectors required less memory and less computational resources, making the computations faster and more efficient. Okay. And then the other thing is by reducing the dimensionality, we can extract essential features and capture the most important information while discarding the less significant details. Okay. And uh, the other thing is dimensionality reduction can help eliminate noise and irrelevant variations in the data, making the vector representation more robust and focused on the essential features. Okay. So in this example, let's say the transformed vector has 128 elements. Okay. So the original vector size is 256 16 into 16 is 256 but let's say after uh, applying the linear uh, this after applying this linear projection now the vector size is 128 okay 
Now, position embedding is added to each image patch, indicating each patch location in the image. Now, why we are using positional encoding? So, guys, when we feed data to transformer, we feed all the data at once. Okay. So, transformer don't know which patch is uh, first and which patch should be the second uh, part of the image and which patch should be the third part of the image, right? So, it don't know about the position of the patches in our image. So, with this positional embedding, we provide that position information to the transformer, okay? So, the transformer vector for all four patches then fed to the uh, further layers in the vision transformer for further processing. So the first layer of the encoder is self-attention layer. Now self-attention allows each patch to attend to and gather information from other patches. It captures dependencies between the patches okay, and also enables the model to consider the global context. If you want to learn more about the self-attention, again, please check the video. The link is given in description section over there. I have explained this whole concept in detail. Okay. So after self-attention layer, we have feed forward network and the output of each patch is passed through a feed forward neural network. This helps capture complex nonlinear relationships within the patches. Okay. After that, we have a classification layer. The final layer of the transformer encoder is a classification head, which maps the output of the transformer into the desired output format. For example, it can be image classification, it can be object detection, right? And guys, uh, as I've told you, there is no decoder, okay? So uh, instead of that decoder, there is just an extra linear layer for final classification, which is called MLP head, okay? Now, the absence of decoder is one of the key difference between the vision transformer and the traditional transformer architecture used in natural language processing tasks. Okay, so in those tasks like in natural language processing tasks where we perform, you know, translations or text generations over there, we need decoder because the decoder component is used to generate output sequences based on the learned representations. Okay. But in computer vision tasks such as image classification or object detection, the primary goal of vision transformer is to extract meaningful feature and to understand the, you know, their uh, spatial uh, relationships within the image. So the encoder in a vision transformer, uh, uh, the encoder in a vision transformer performs this task by leveraging self-attention mechanism, mechanisms to capture both local and global dependencies between image and patches. So guys, this is just a basic idea. This is just an overview on vision transformer and how the vision transformer and the normal transformer differ. Okay. So in my upcoming videos, we will see how to implement vision transformer and will perform different kind of image classifications and object detection task using a vision transformers. Okay. So I hope this video is helpful. And guys, if you like my video, please like, share and subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching.